It's coming down out there, and the TV weather report said it would be like this until sometime tomorrow. Wonder if we can find a good deal on an ocean liner. Glad we're not on the road, but it gets real tricky on nights like this, huh? Extreme weather is always hazardous, Diesel, but professional drivers don't have to be in blizzards, tornadoes, or hurricanes for driving conditions to be hazardous. Hey, I know! I've seen some careless car drivers on the road myself! Going too fast, changing lanes and not signaling, slowing down for no reason, running stoplights! Wow! Makes my heart race! Whew. Take a breath, Diesel. Calm down. Even in perfect weather conditions, day or night, there are still hazardous conditions requiring extreme skills from professional drivers. Ah, uh, like what? Man, it's raining cats and dogs out there now! Pay attention, Diesel. Here's a good example. A great percentage of all accidents occur at intersections. Mmm, never thought about intersections being hazardous. Hmm. Which is why your visual search skills come into play every time you enter an intersection. Visual search. Got it. Search straight ahead, then left, straight ahead, then right, then straight ahead giving you the overall picture of everything going on around you, right? Is that your final answer, Diesel? Yes, yes, visual search, that's it. Absolutely correct, and good job, Diesel. Safety skills and driving practices get us back home safely after every trip, Diesel. It's an important point to remember. You'll get no argument from me. But here's the deal, Diesel. Safety comes when you make it part of your life. Whether you're on a straight stretch of road in the middle of nowhere or driving in the city, professional drivers make safety a habit. Drivers use proper search skills and have a professional mindset that focuses on safety. Okay, that's important. Here's another thing. Hazardous driving skills also include hazard awareness. Looking for clues that signal a potential hazard on the roadway or the dock or yard where you drop your trailer. Here's a quick example. Every year, a lot of equipment is damaged before it ever leaves the yard because drivers leave out an important part of space management. What do you mean? Remember, space management means everything around your rig, under, over, to the sides, and front and back. But too many times we don't look up for low-hanging wires or tree branches, or down for damaging debris in the road. We often don't see the obvious. Good point. What about those clues you were talking about? A professional driver uses clues, which are everywhere, to detect hazards. Okay, now you're talking my language. And you'll be glad to know I'm on the case. Oh, that's great, Diesel. Just great. So just like road signs give us clues about what lies ahead, such as a railroad crossing where you never stop closer than 15 feet, a four-way stop or a curve, Professional drivers look for clues and then put them together. Let me give you an example. When you're driving down the freeway at night and you begin to see a long line of brake lights, that's a clue. But a clue to what? It could be a clue that something was stopping traffic up the road. Or maybe it was a chain reaction of drivers stopping for some reason. Maybe an accident. Or maybe rubbernecking an accident. Many times, and this is unfortunate, Professional drivers learn to read roadway clues because of close calls or even accidents. But just to give you some idea, these clues can also be the weather and resulting road conditions. Or drivers can also get clues from how other drivers are acting. Are they stopping suddenly, honking their horns? Is there an emergency vehicle with flashing lights? Do you hear a siren? All clues to slow down and put your visual search to work, right? Is this rain ever going to let up? I mean, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned the ocean liner a few minutes ago. I was only kidding. Well, since you brought it up, again, let's talk about the weather. 
because weather conditions can easily turn a good, reliable surface into a potential hazard. But professional drivers rule, as they say in rain, snow, sleet, and dark of night. Wait, I think that's what they used to say about the U.S. mail. Close enough, Diesel. Professional drivers drive more miles in bad weather than anybody else on the roads today, and it's not always easy. Roads become slippery when it's icy, snowy, or wet, and dangerous when it is hot enough to melt asphalt. A slippery road is not good news for big trucks. Their size, weight, and high center of gravity can make them a challenge to drive even in perfect conditions. So what do you need to do to drive safely on slippery roads? Drive on the shoulder? Driving on the shoulder is even more dangerous, Diesel. When roads become slippery, and roads are the most slippery just after rains begin, debris, dirt, and oil become mixed with water and before being washed away from the roadway can reduce traction. Oh, I get it. A big rig needs more time to stop or change lanes. Good answer. And it goes without saying, if there's debris on the road or anything that doesn't move when the wind blows, like tire casings, never drive over them because this may damage your tires or other systems on your tractor trailer. Which brings us to night driving. Right on cue! Take those goggles off, Diesel. This is serious business. You're no fun. Let's start with the fact that a large percent of your reactions as a driver depends on vision, and at night, your ability to see, your depth perception, and your peripheral vision are not as good between dusk and sunrise. That could be the majority of time you're on the road. That's exactly my point, Diesel. When all of these visual aspects are working at less than 100%, you have to look closer to see things, like the condition of the road and any other hazards, and that cuts into your reaction time, in case you have to change lanes, stop, or make an emergency maneuver. So what do you do? For starters, use common sense and courtesy. Next, never overdrive your headlights. Low beams normally reach about 250 feet and high beams about 500 feet. If you're approaching things faster than you have time to react, you're driving too fast for road and weather conditions and never drive with a light on inside your cab. Well, what about driving in heavy rain, like tonight? My advice is always try to sit out the storm, and I know that's not always possible, but when visibility is low because of lighting, dust, rain, snow, or sleet, lower your speed. Remember SIPD, search, identify, predict, decide, and execute. Use the center and edge lines of the roadway as safety guides and never ever stop on the roadway. But if you can't avoid stopping, move to the side of the road. Use your four ways and place your safety triangles in accordance with FMCSR section 393.95H to warn other drivers. So that's what those triangles are for. Man, I'm learning something new every day. And when we talk about night driving, remember to include fatigue. Of course, fatigue can be a problem anytime, but especially at night. And professional truck drivers take that into consideration when scheduling their rest periods. Well, I'm getting tired just sitting here, waiting for the rain to stop. Good point. When we're not moving around, we can experience fatigue. So think about sitting in a cab all day, driving hundreds of miles. A driver should always evaluate whether he or she feels fatigued. Some warning signs that your body is experiencing more fatigue besides the normal tension in your neck, shoulders, or back would be burning watery eyes, more rapid breathing, having difficulty in focusing on the driving task, finding yourself drifting out of your lane or driving slower than speeding up and slowing down again. I've driven around cars like that. Made me want to give them all the room they needed. So, what's the cure for this, Doc? The only cure is stopping and taking a power nap. Some people think coffee or rolling down the window or taking caffeine tablets can help. That's not the answer. The best thing you can do is stop and take a nap. And as I stated with the earlier symptoms and before your eyes start closing, that's the time to pull off the road. Hey, I've got a question for you, Diesel. Know the most dangerous times to be driving on a highway? Around 2 a.m. after the bars close and you have to dodge the drunks. Remember, 
The amount of drunks begins to significantly increase after 5 o'clock p.m. when people are getting off work and stop for a cold one. Well, that is a dangerous time. But researchers tell us the hours between noon and 2 p.m. and again from 5 to 7 p.m. are perhaps the most dangerous times for anyone driving. Makes sense. I usually find myself falling asleep after Thanksgiving dinner. I'll have to think about that one. So these are times when you want to practice defensive driving. No, you practice defensive driving all of the time. But there are times and circumstances where it's time to kick your visual search skills into high gear. Good information. So, what's next? Maybe I should put a plug in for the pre-trip inspection here. It's particularly important in hazardous driving conditions to make sure coolant levels are full, your heating equipment is working properly, your lights are clean and working, wipers are in good repair, brakes should be top-notch, and your tires. I can't emphasize enough that your tires and tire tread are in good shape. You should also have chains, emergency equipment, and blankets, food, and water just in case. Okay, chains, blankets, food, and water. Check! Winter driving, here we come! Speaking of winter, let's say we were driving in the mountains. It's not icy or snowing, but it's cold. Colder than a... It's cold, Diesel. That's all we need to know. So we're dealing with gravity, and that changes how we normally drive. Because it's pulling you down, right? Right you are, Isaac Newton. Newton! Oh yeah, now I remember. The guy with the apple, right? Gravity works on your rig when you're driving in the mountains, so it's important to realize that beginning with your pre-trip. Look closely at those brakes. Listen for air leaks. Be sure your trailer supply valve is working. And when you're driving up grades, be patient. No reckless moves. I'll show you some reckless moves. No, Diesel. I'm talking about trying to pass when there's no visibility or following behind a slow-moving vehicle. That's for driving grades. What about the downhill side? Okay, you can start downhill by using a low gear. Turn on those four ways. If your speed is 30 miles per hour, apply your brakes in a safe manner until you reach 25 miles per hour. Then release the brakes and apply again, as often as you need to in order to reach your safest speed. But if you don't start out correctly, you'll have problems on the downhill side. Sounds like good advice to me. Now you're driving downhill and having trouble slowing your rig. It's a good idea to be in the gear lower than the one you climbed with. And then using your visual search, start looking for an escape ramp or a good place to pull off the road if you need to. Escape ramps. Escape ramps? Let's see. Escape ramps are found on grades and are designed to stop a vehicle in a fairly short space without injuring people or damaging your freight. A good rule of thumb is, when in doubt, use a ramp. Okay, I've got the picture on mountain driving. So what's next? Then there's black ice. Sounds nasty. What is black ice? Black ice can fool you. It looks like water on the road and you can see through it, except it's frozen and can cause a deadly skid or jackknife. It's usually found beneath overpasses, in dips, and where the road is shaded by trees or other structures. So in any icy weather, adjust your speed by lowering it at least one-fourth. Before you begin driving in icy conditions, make sure your proper tire inflation gives you increased traction. And as always, your visual search skills are key to driving safely. So let's say you're out there driving and road conditions cause your rig to skid. How do you handle a skid situation? Good question, Diesel. Actually, let's begin with what causes a skid. And those reasons include driving too fast, and that's a common cause. But there's also over-acceleration, braking too hard for the road conditions, or turning your steering wheel too quickly. These same actions can cause a jackknife. To avoid skids or jackknives, just keep your cool. Drive a reasonable speed, never over-accelerate, over-brake, or over-steer. Aggressive driving creates unsafe following distances and over-braking. In addition to being a major safety violation, it is an extreme waste of fuel. You've got it, Diesel. I'm impressed. Me too. There are other hazards to avoid that create safety issues, like following too closely, 
driving in poor visibility, and the response of other drivers to these conditions. When following other vehicles, remember to leave at least one second of following distance for every 10 feet of rig, plus one additional second if you're over 45 miles per hour. Increase that distance when hazardous conditions exist. Makes sense to me, and it looks like the rain is just about to stop. Finally! And not a moment too soon. We've got to get back on the road. And as the old saying goes, time and tide waits for no man. Huh? Tide? Is the water that high? I'll get my dive gear. Diesel.